Let me ask you a simple question. What has been here for as long as humans, even before we could read or write, even before language at all? As strange as it might be, the answer is art. The Lascaux cave in France covered in prehistoric art is a proof of that. Why would cavemen who had to focus all their energy on surviving take time to draw and paint? Well, that's because art has a serious impact on human spirit and emotions. There are many examples of art affecting society throughout history. In fact, it has been the basis of many revolutions, as it walks hand in hand with evolution. The Lascaux cave I mentioned before is not the only one covered in prehistoric art. There are from 350 to 400 different caves harboring prehistoric paintings and carvings in both France and Spain. These remains that let us have a glimpse into the Ice Age world have been discovered not too long ago in terms of humanity's lifespan. Only in the second half of the 19th century was the first cave discovered. There's actually a pretty funny story behind the first discovery. In 1879, the Spanish amateur archaeologist Marcelino Sanz de Sautola decides to go explore a cave in Altamira, Spain, with his daughter Maria. They have been wandering in the cave for a while when little Maria suddenly stops and turns to her father. She then says, Papa, look, an ox. On the wall in front of her was the first art heritage found from the Paleolithic era. The painting you are seeing right now. Through carbon dating and other methods, it has been revealed that these artworks were created by Homo sapiens approximately 40,000 years ago. At first, these might not seem like much because they kind of look like scribbles made by a toddler finger painting, but these are actually gold to today's historians and scientists because they explain how our first ancestors lived. Most of cave art depict animals like mammoths, horses, bulls, and deers that roam alongside groups of humanity's first populations. These wild beasts appeared a lot because of their connection to hunting, a vital activity. The prehistoric man used red and black pigments made from rocks and mostly painted directly on the cave walls, while sometimes they took the time to cover design beforehand. The animals are represented dimensionally proportionate and full, which demonstrates a good understanding of animal anatomy for the time. Their own bodies, so human bodies, are not often featured, but when the human body is featured, it's in a schematic way rather than a detailed way. These artworks were one of humanity's first way of communication. With these drawings, they could depict events and things treasured by them at that time. The most common theme illustrated was the hunt, something vital to them. Animals were represented in a proportionate way to show how the meat they had was important for their survival. The human figures weren't well represented because they couldn't perceive themselves well. They didn't acknowledge their own importance. These illustrations were a way to teach others what hunting was about and the dangers from it. The Lascaux Cave and the Chauvet Pont d'Arc have some of the most detailed art pieces from that era. Not only is the art detailed, but it is also far away from the cave's entrance, which demonstrates furthermore the efforts done for art. Sculptures from the Paleolithic era were also discovered. They were mostly of animals, but other ones depict an idealization of a woman. These sculptures represented fertility and vitality. They are considered to be the first representation of a Venus, which is a figure represented in many art movements through history. Let's take a look at this first version of the Venus of Willendorf, for example. It has large breasts and wide hips, characteristics that represent fertility on women, according to experts. Was art used to represent blessings, maybe? That brings us to a great question. What is the purpose of art in that era? Well, scholars have a part of an answer. Some say that because there was a lot of representation of animals, that maybe prehistoric men worshipped ancestral animals. But some others refuted that hypothesis by saying that the representation of animals only reveals the underdeveloped sense of self in the prehistoric man. The latter also insinuate that cave drawings were done to recount events and things cavemen liked. Nonetheless, the drawings illustrate perfectly how a man taught in that era and they are evidence of a time when humans were able to carve their thoughts in stone. To explain the artworks deep in caves, experts say that they were done by shamans in a trance-like state, and that the art represents the animals they encounter in the spirit world. I know it sounds weird, but it could be true. Another hypothesis is that these cave drawings are the earliest form of written communication. 
A lot of similar symbols are seen all over the hundreds of caves and could have meaning behind them. Let's take the negative handprint for example. It could be used as a symbol of community or simply as a symbol of having a place in the world. After the Paleolithic age, roughly 10,000 years ago, the Neolithic age began. Men started to settle down, start farming, which led to them slowly parting with the caves. That changed the way of art. What represented art was now statues, totems, masks, and effigies. Art was now a ritual way of honoring ancestors. In the Neolithic age, the ice age had ended, so the temperature warmed up, which made it possible to grow crops. Since the animals were adapted to the cold weather, some became less available for men to hunt. To guard the crops and resources they had, they started creating civilizations. The people had no choice but to change our lifestyle, and so did the art. To help the process of farming, men had to create tools and technology, such as terracotta pottery, which helped gather and conserve food in one spot. Because food became something they could control, they had more of it, so the population had the possibility to grow. Because women had to take care of the children, they lost equal responsibility. Men started to take charge. Not every man was assigned to the farms, but different tasks got assigned, like making pottery, clothing, become soldiers, or build stuff. The priests who talked to God were accorded a great importance. A hierarchy started to form, as some jobs were more important than others. The gods worshipped weren't women anymore, the Venuses got replaced with manly figures. There's a switch from the Paleolithic age. Now humans are the subjects that are detailed rather than the animals. This can be explained by the fact that humans now perceive that they are the ones to provide for themselves. Humans are now the important ones that do things for the human culture. Stonehenge is a great example of the switch. In Paleolithic age, humans would never have been able to create something like this since they never settled. This took over thousands of years because these rocks were brought from places miles away. The only motive of the men of the age was that they thought that some of the rocks had healing properties, which were healing the earth. Also, it explains the intelligence of those who made it, because it serves as a calendar that marks the solstices, which are important so the farmers know when the seasons change. In a more spiritual way, some bodies were found near Stonehenge, which leads us to believe that it was also used as sacrificial grounds. In the nomad lifestyle, people were buried wherever but with a sanitary lifestyle, they were buried close to each other. People now believed in the existence of an afterlife, so they create burial objects and burial markers, so they could keep it with them in the afterlife. Burial art was a huge thing at that time. A series of thousands of mass-produced burial objects were handcrafted, which means there was someone, or multiple people, assigned to create these ceramic figures, because no mold was ever found. There is a debate over if these artworks could actually be considered art, because in both the Paleolithic Age and the Neolithic Age, art was used as a primal survival mechanism, so according to scholars, it wasn't necessarily art. Nevertheless, it is important to understand that this was the first step that would create art. As simple as they might seem, the cave paintings are considered to be revolutionary. These pioneers laid the foundation of art as a whole. From 3000 to 30 BC, we enter a special stage called the Bronze Age in Egyptian art. The ancient Egyptians took inspiration from many ancient art styles seen before. Instead of only representing animals or humanly figures, they decided to paint or sculpt humans, gods, goddesses, or honestly anyone who had some sort of importance in society, taking animal forms. In ancient Egypt, it is important to understand that art had a royal, even divine purpose. They did not honor their ancestors, animals, or unimportant peasants. They honored gods, pharaohs, and heroic figures. Another interesting little fun fact is that ancient Egyptians did not have museums because art was never meant to be for the living, but rather intended as tomb decorations for pharaohs and other higher ups as a way to, again, honor them. The only art that was accessible to the living was for wealthy people and included amulets, jewelry, cosmetic containers, pottery, and beautiful furniture. The style of Egyptian paintings is honestly easy to recognize, even if you don't know anything about art. Its incontestable flatness erasing any chance of a horizon makes the forms in Egyptian paintings rather similar to another form of art seen before. Yes, it's all starting to click. Ancient Egyptians made use of the same mixed perspective found in Stone Age art. This means that in the same scene, different objects or body parts were viewed from different angles in order to be distinctly recognizable. For example, and you already notice it without realizing, 
people were always drawn in a profile or side view because they wouldn't be recognizable in a frontal view. Waists, limbs, and strangely faces were also drawn in profile view. On the other hand, no pun intended of course, eyes and shoulders were shown in the frontal perspective. To help clarify the painting, parallel lines called registers were used to order the subjects in a piece, separating scenes, and providing a sense of depth. This process is highly similar to the one used in comic books nowadays. The absence of registers indicated chaos and occurred in battle and hunting scenes. The purpose of this odd mixed perspective was to convey more information about the subjects than if they were drawn in a singular perspective. However, it is not the only method ancient Egyptians used to characterize figures. A noticeable element often found in ancient Egyptian paintings is the very different sizes of figures, which were highly symbolic. Pharaohs were often the largest figures in scenes, symbolizing their power and dominance, while the peons, the little people, were smaller in size. Therefore, it is logical to think that in this period, art partook in a somewhat political purpose, a facet that had not sustained before. Colors were as important as size in distinguishing figures. Men who worked outside were often painted red, while women and indoor workers were painting yellow. Aside from these subtle aspects, ancient Egyptian painters did not put much effort in detail, at least at the beginning. During the Armenid period, which lasted from 1085 to 1055 BC, the attention to detail increased with the full use of artistic materials. Figures began to be more stylized and detailed, and many more were included in each scene, some even overlapped with each other to create a sense of movement and urgency. This period is considered to be a high point in ancient Egyptian art. Of course, painting was not the only form of art in ancient Egypt. There were many more. And on top of that, they were not all two-dimensional. Sculpture and pottery, for example, played a huge role in society. One form of sculpture that was invented by the ancient Egyptian is the obelisk, which is a tall rectangular monument with a pyramid on top, all carved from a single piece of stone. They were tributes to the sun god to symbolize petrified sun rays. These long monuments contain many painted or carved figures on its sides. Who doesn't think of the Great Sphinx of Giza when ancient Egyptian sculptures are talked about? There seems to be a common theme in ancient Egypt of creating colossal tributes representing gods and figures taking animal forms. Another Egyptian innovation was the stone column. Topped with floral decorations called capitals, these stone columns are one of the most significant staples of ancient architecture. The Terras Temple of Achepsut features long rows of columns called kalanets, another staple of architecture in ancient Egyptian art. Of course, we cannot mention Egyptian art without picturing their world-renowned pyramids. The Giza Pyramid Complex, which is listed in the UNESCO World Heritage List since 1979, is by far one of their most impressive work to this day. It is actually the last remaining of the original Seven Wonders of the World. Its mind-blowingly precise construction and orientation have people believing to this day that extraterrestrial forces had a do in this. Indeed, it is estimated that the Pyramid of Giza is made of around 2.3 million blocks of stone and weighs about 6 million tons. Adding to that, the base of the pyramid points to the four directions of the compass. The complex situated in Cairo includes the Great Pyramid of Khufu, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the Pyramid of Menkora all created to honor the three kings from whom they get their name. In fact, these pyramids were built as a necropolis for generations of rulers. They each included a mortuary as well as a temple devoted to the divine leaders. Despite its impressive exterior allure, the interior of the 481 feet high structure of the Pyramid of Khufu is pretty sober. In fact, inside lies the subterranean chambers. The surprising fact is that barely any hieroglyph, decoration, or artwork can be found inside the pyramid. This fact disconcerted Napoleon. Yes, Napoleon Bonaparte, as in the future Emperor of France, as he made his discovery of the Pyramid of Giza. Hearing all of the legends behind the mysterious pyramids, he expected to find plenty of precious treasures and artifacts, only to find blank stone walls. But why wasn't there any hieroglyph or form of art present? Theories suppose that fine objects could have been stolen when robbers broke into the pyramids centuries after, but the fact remains that Egyptians only started decorating their pyramid chambers later on. The pyramid's shape was once again intended to represent petrified sun rays. They were designed as staircases leading to the sky for the pharaohs to climb in order to reach the realm of the gods in the afterlife. 
A vague mystery still remains concerning the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. How could they have built such complex architectural treasures without any use of machines or technology? Theories have long stated that pharaohs exploited slaves to do the labor needed, but recent discoveries might prove that most of the workers were actually experienced constructors. The fact remains that we still don't know the genius mind behind the design of the impressive Egyptian pyramids. Even now, we continue to be influenced by their style. The most obvious influence would be the Washington Monument, a literal obelisk. But let's not get too far. After all, you still have four episodes of Art Revolution to watch. The first to be influenced by ancient Egyptians have to be the Greeks, or the Romans, who loved their columns a little too much. But that's a story for the next episode. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about what we discussed today, we've left for you an additional information document in the description below. See you next time.